Today we are going to begin construction on the Krizenbahn table and chair set that I got at the local mini store. So join me and see how easy this kit is to put together. So we are, like I said in the intro, we are going to start working on the table and chairs. If you're seeing this part of the video, that means that we are actually working on this this week. Be sure and check out the blog post because I'm going to tell you what we were supposed to work on this week and why we aren't. So this kit is securely stapled together. So hopefully we have all the pieces, which we'll find out soon. So that's one thing to look for when you're buying these kits peek in the box and make sure this bag is stapled if at all possible because if they're not stapled shut there is a slight chance that you might be missing some of these many many pieces to the kit. The next thing you should do if you've not put the kit together before, I've actually done this kit in the past, get the, the instructions out and read them very thoroughly. Now, the next thing I usually do is I take this packet of what they call fruit wood stain and I toss it because I've used that a couple of times and I'm always really, really unhappy with the finish I get from that. All right, at this point in time, you're probably wondering, where's the video? Well, so am I because I apparently forgot to hit record. What I was going to go on and tell you was that you have thousands of choices when it comes to paint if you use acrylic paint and that's probably what we'll do. Then I went on to tell you that I was going to pause the camera and divide out all the pieces into separate bags for each step and then we can pick up where I left off. All right first off I want to say yay all the pieces are here. They're all sorted now by steps. Now another important thing I want to point out we have these extra pieces. Don't throw this away until after you've completed your project because there could still be little tiny pieces that we missed. Probably not on this kit because there's not as many really tiny pieces, but on many kits I have found I've accidentally left something. So that I don't throw away until I'm all done. <coughs> now we have our little bags. Each bag represents a step, a step in construction. I have a chair in each of these. This is all the pieces to each chair. This bag just contains the two leaves, and that's what I love about this table. It can expand and, and be made bigger and smaller, just like a real one. This is another step, and this is step one. So I've got my new model cement. Yay, I got the good stuff. Um, this takes a bit of doing to open. If you buy one of these, I had a little trouble with this one. The instructions say to clip back just like a 32nd of an inch at a time until you find the hole. And then I actually had to run a long piece of wire down. There was actually something stopping it down in here. I can't seem to get this off, so I just used a wire and poked into it until I could actually could smell the glue and now it comes out, but it just comes out a drop at a time. This is a wonderful little thing. So we have our diagram for step one. Step one contains all the parts in this bag. This bag contains two base halves, which are what these are called. It contains a guide support, two guides, and two more legs. Um, this is it's a really neat table. So we are going to do step one now. Now the first thing I do when I go to do a step, I go over my pieces and I look again. Because as I took them apart and separated them, I used a knife and an emery board to make sure they were right. Don't be too over, you know, don't go too overboard on your trimming because 
you need, you know, you don't want to make these too small to go together. But at the same time, you need to get rid of all those little extra bits. So let's dry fit this. And dry fit means we just hold it together and make sure it's going to fit. This is going to go this way. The legs go in these slots like that. Okay, so that's going to go like that. Then this is going to be glued on here after, well, once that's glued together. And these pieces will be glued in these slots. So let's start by gluing these pieces into their slots. And I'll give them a few seconds. And what I love about this glue is it's got this precision applicator. So if I can put this down on the table, it might be easier. And just a little glue comes out. Am I getting any? There we go. Just a little glue at a time. Now remember, you don't want to get this on the good part of your model and you don't want to get this on your fingers. I should have a wet wipe, but we'll get to that in a moment. It's nice to start on this area because this area won't actually show, so it's a good place to kind of get a feel for the glue bottle. Now very carefully line these up, press it for five to ten seconds, and then let it sit. Let's get a wet wipe before we go on to the next part. Now, I am going to run some glue along these areas where I saw that it touched and around those little pegs. And once again, if you see some of that out, wipe it off right away. It will mar the surface because basically how model cement works is it melts the plastic and makes it bond together. Now we need to get glue on these pieces so they can go in there. And model cement does smell incredibly bad, so you will want to do this in a well-ventilated room. Um, since I record with the door shut, I'm going to have to stop after I get this part done and get this room aired out a bit before we go on to the next step. So now this part goes this way. We have these two little parts here that stick out and we have slots for those. So we are going to put glue right here. Actually, I'm going to put glue right here. It'll be easier. Oops. All right. Now, put the lid on the glue because this glue is more expensive than the other that you buy. Like, you can get the other at Walmart and those kind of places. This one, you'll probably need to go to a hobby store to get it. It's made by the same testers people, but it's a much better glue. Um, is it marked? I have no, uh, let's see, I paid, this was $5.55. So it's a little more expensive, but it's definitely worth it. It also has these little wires in case you need to open up your glue more. All right, so I'm going to let that set and dry. When this is dry in a couple of hours, I'll be back and we'll do the next step. All right, so step one is dry. We have our table base all done. Uh, it's a nice sturdy structure. It looks pretty good. Um, and once it's got a finish on it, it will look great. Now we need to do step two. Step two is to assemble the top halves. Um, and we have, we have runners so that the table can open and close. These will fit into the runners. Now, the next part, we are going to, I'm going to show you why it is so important to dry fit and to read these diagrams. Because as you can see, one side, we're supposed to have the slots facing inside and the other half of the table, they're supposed to face outside. Well, and we have peg, our, our runners have their little bumps, their little, what are they calling them? 
We have two types of runners with pins close together, two with close together, and two with them further apart. Now I don't know if my package has, does not have the right runners, or if I have two of the same tabletop. I suspect I have the same tabletop. But when I put my runners, see I have my slots on this side, my slots on this side. When I put my runners onto my top, this is what happens. This one goes here. Okay, that's fine. That one goes out. When I put this wide spaced one, it also faces out. This is a narrow space. And yes, I have flipped them back and forth multiple times. The problem being, they're identical. Both sets fit that way. And when I try to put this together, when I dry fit it, they're in the same spot. You see? They actually need to be over a little bit. So, we need to fix this. So, one thing we need to do, um, and I don't know, like I said, I don't know, because when I take these ones that have the pieces together, they're identical. They both face that way. These both face this way. So I suspect I have two of the same top. I suspect that both of these are the same side. Okay, we're going to fix this. What we are going to do is we are going to lay this on top and we're going to, since they are in the same spot, I'm just going to pick a table because I think, yeah, see those are the same, yeah. So when I lay this here, this goes outside. So these need to face out in that location. So do either of these face out? Yes, they both face out. So. I am going to glue the first set. So for this step, we are we're dividing step two. What I want to say is we are dividing step two into two steps, I guess. So let's get this set of rails completely glued. Is this coming out? There we go. Put a little bit of glue in each of these holes on this side of the table only. We are not going to glue any rails to this side. We want these to face out. See? Face out. Stay there. And then I need this part to dry. When this part gets dry, we are going to put this, we're going to slide this on. We're going to slide this over, and we are going to mark where we want new holes. And I'm going to use my little drill, and I'm going to create some new places to glue these. So let's let this glue dry, and then I'll be back. All right, so this side is all set up now. And what we are going to do, I think I have figured this out. Now, I have not run into this particular problem before, but I have fixed other issues. I've kind of thought it through. This is how I've come up to fix it. Now I've slid this on. This is how this will fit when it's on the table. I'm going to use these. I'm going to slide these on. Oops, you know what? Let me just sand that just a bit because there's a little tiny ridge of plastic there that is preventing it from going where it needs to go. There, get that all smooth. Now, this end, the little, the little pins need to be out. And we are going to slide this one up like this. Now we are going to do the same thing with this one. Now, we know where the pins are. This is how it will fit on the table when the table is closed. We are going to take some black craft paint. Because what we need to do is we need to use these little pins to make marks on this tabletop to show me where 
I need to drill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch just the top of my pins. And this paint, it won't show, it won't... And hopefully the camera lights that I've got on won't dry the paint so quickly that it won't mark where I need it to mark. Now, I need to hold. I need to hold this on. As I was saying, I need to hold this on. Get this all the way up. Now I'm going to hold it with my fingers. I am going to slide this on. And now, in theory, I have to push that down. Yes, I have little marks. Now I'm going to use my little drill. And yet, we don't want the main thing here is I don't want to go all the way through. I just want to go in about as deep as this is. A little bit deeper than I am here. So hopefully, you're seeing what I'm doing here. This hole's a little smaller, but it will be fine. It should be fine anyway. But this, I think, really illustrates why we need to dry fit when we are doing things. When we're making something like this, we need to dry fit. It's so important. Because if I hadn't dry fit this, if I had just, and I hadn't really checked my instructions, I would have glued that on and it would have been, you know, pretty permanently glued and I wouldn't have been able to put my table together. Now, is there a better way to do this? Yeah, probably. Is this necessarily the right way to do it? Yeah, I don't know. I've never run into anyone that said they had to fix this before. So I don't know. Maybe there's a better way to do it, maybe not. This is just what came to me as I was problem solving the issue, okay? I think this one needs to be a little deeper. Now, we are going to take these, we are going to dry fit them in, and this one fits good. This one needs a little deeper. Because I could feel that it wasn't going in far enough. That I know is deep enough. Okay, going in. And I need to go just a little bit next to that. And on the bright side, no one will actually ever see this, you know, unless they actually turn this table upside down. So it's probably okay. Should my glue is working? Come on. All right, we need to take the wire and run the wire. This is when, when this glue doesn't want to come out, you simply no, it doesn't. There. Now make sure we're putting glue in the correct holes. I'm actually going to put a little extra there. And this glue takes about two hours to dry. So, oops, come on, stay in there. Yeah, it doesn't want to stay in as well as it probably would have had we uh, had the original holes. But it will be alright. 
See, I think this one needs to be a little deeper too. Are we still under camera? I'm trying to stay under camera and still be where I can see. little extra glue because this is probably not as secure of a fit as the original was so let's go ahead and put a little extra glue like there and there just to help hold this whole structure There. Now, that glue needs to sit for at least two hours. We want this to be completely solid. And then, well, and then this will actually be done. Our table will be assembled. So let's go ahead and push this off to the side. And let's put together one of the two chairs. And I'll do the other chair off camera so you can see how that works. So we turn it over. So step three is just really completing the table once it's dry and putting the leaves in. So we're going to go over to step four. We need to assemble by putting the side rungs. These are our side rungs. The little extra bump goes on the top to the front. So this goes here. And like I said, we need to make sure that we are dry fitting everything. This goes here, and then our front legs are going to go on, Oopsie. and then, yeah, so let's go ahead and get this started. Where's the camera? Play, where's the camera? This is so much easier when you don't have a camera to have to watch, too. Alright. Now, I want to get everything put together so that we make sure the chair is um, level. Because it's not right now. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oops. This is not going to be a comfortable chair. There we go. Now, this will go this way. This will go into the back and then onto those legs. Whoops. There's a real fine line when you're gluing something like this because we need to have this glue soft enough that we can manipulate if we need to. So we don't break the chair trying to get it together. But we also need it solidly glued enough that it will stay together while we're trying to put it together. <laughs> Come on. This is one of those pieces where it would really help to have like four hands. There, that's better. Now, let's 
seat in the notches the back, square the legs on a flat surface. And then we need to let this part dry. So once this is square, it needs to dry. So I'm going to hold this square on the table. And when this is, actually then I will finish the other chair and I think we will come back next week and I will show you the last step on the chair and we will start putting a finish on because I have a feeling this video is getting pretty long already. So I hope you enjoyed our uh, little project here. Come back next week and see what the next thing is, how we finish the next steps, and hopefully it will go off without a hitch next week. So find us on Facebook if you haven't. Be sure to read the blog post so you can find out what we were supposed to do this week and why we aren't. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.